Okay, I went to the thrift shop. Found this box marked Cuckoo Clock. And it's pretty well tore up. They wanted $9.99, but I figured I'd get it just to show how to clean the clock. I didn't want to dig one of my other ones out, I guess. Most of them can be saved. This one does have the cuckoo bird in it. And the hands are broke. You see the numbers are missing. And the bird. He happens to be in the box thrown in here. It goes on here like that. So I'm going to take you on the adventure of how to try to clean up a cuckoo clock. You'll notice the mold dirt look in here and whatnot. We're going to clean all that up too. Now with this cuckoo clock, it did come with both weights which is good. There's no pendulum that goes to this. So I'll look online but I'm figuring you're going to probably if you're going to try to buy an old one approximately 10 to 15 dollars. Uh, you can buy them brand new they won't match but there's a chance you can get them to match on these things. And there are two sets of chains they have the end piece on here to keep it from going up inside the clock when it winds down. But on the other end, the hook is missing. There's no hook there, so that means I need to buy a set of uh, hooks for the clock. Unless I happen to have some. And both chains are the same length, so that tells me that pretty much the chain is there. Uh, usually on some of these older clocks they, they start to slow way down. You can't speed them up because they're getting gummed up inside. And people will hang besides the weight, they'll hang other, other uh, weights, big nuts, that kind of stuff. Or they'll start pulling on the weight, especially to make the cuckoo bird cuckoo and that will stretch the chain out and it won't run right then so you might have to go ahead and buy a new chain. You say we'll glue that on later. And the other thing about these cuckoo clocks if they're stored laying on their, laying on their back there's the bonger part they're stored laying on their back. These bellows in here will open up a bit. And if they open up and stay open, or if you caught it in the middle of uh, the cuckoo bird ringing or whatever you want to call it, cuckooing, then the paper in here will cause it to stay open. And they only have a small weight on the top of each one of these bellows. And so these bellows won't close all the way and have that cuckoo bird sound. So when you're storing these things, you should try to make sure the bellows are closed and leave the clock setting like this so the weights will hold down on top of the bellow. So anyway, to even start working on this thing, first thing I do, I'll take the nut off the hands and I get a container so I can put all my small parts in. And the cuckoo bird, you'll see there's a wire on here. That wire needs to be taken off, so you just bend that up. 
carefully. Because there's this little horseshoe nail that it's on. Horseshoe nail is a little tight, I think. Maybe I bent it up too far. There we go. Yeah, I pop that off. I'm just gonna let that go inside foot wheel. So here we are disconnected. Now the bird's not popping right back in, so I'm gonna be careful. Watch that door and set it on its back. And the next thing you need to do is on the side here you'll find the screw it's also got a, a finished nail in here but you undo the screw and these bellows are usually also glued on you take that screw out Now the screws to the bellows, once I get the bellow out, I'll put the screw back in to the bellow. Just slowly pry it off. And this one's not even hooked up. So, let's see. Yeah, it just came off there, off that little ring there. But this is... And by looking at the bellow, it looks pretty good. It's not all broke, otherwise if it's broke, you have to replace this part here. So that's one of the sounds. Let's take this other one off. And by the way, the tack stays in there. Let me get that screw put in here before it's too late. The nail went through right there. All that, all that nail does is steadies this so it doesn't rock back and forth when this is being worked. You notice how slow that is too? That's because these were left open when I found it. I only pushed it down. I'll probably take rubber bands, hold them like this for about 24 hours, take the rubber band off, it should be fine. So let's take this other one off. screwdriver a little bit of a twist if I can get underneath there so I'm not doing too much actual prying there we go okay that one just fell I was on there it just fell off They should be working fa faster than what that's going. Like I say, we'll take care of that. Now the next thing is there will be four screws in here you got to take out. The chain's already fallen off, so I don't have to worry about any of that. If the chain was still on, you'd uh, when you wind this up, the weight part goes up towards the clock. What you'll do is you want to unhook the chain off of the hook and just pull it all the way through and it'll go through the works. 
And let's see here. Let me stop this a second. Just let the screws fall off down there. Because you're not going nowhere. You're cleaning the clock. There's just four screws here. And it is an antique clock. So normally they will be this straight slotted screw screw head. If it was a Phillips screw head, I would tell you for sure it's a newer clock. But I've never seen a cuckoo clock with a Phillips head. Okay, the pendulum rod I just shoved up to make sure it's up out of the way. Be careful so you don't rip the bird off. Now, imagine you can see how filthy this thing is. The reason why these things are so filthy and they consider a cuckoo clock a high maintenance clock is because it's open underneath and the pendulum that swings, that's a big open area, dust is always flying up in there. You got the chains that are filling with dust and as you wind it, the dust will go up in there. The cuckoo bird pops out and he'll uh, bring some dust in. So I'm gonna, this is a little screw, take the cuckoo bird off. You have to readjust that when you put it in. This cuckoo bird, if you'll notice, his little mouth opens up. Those are a little more valuable than just a piece of wood that looks like a bird. So, let's see. I think I'm going to leave these wires on. These here, two wires, go to the bellows. I'm going to leave them on because they're absolutely filthy. I don't even know if this thing ran or not. I didn't try it. It does work. So what I'm going to do, the cleaning fluid I have is really a high concentrate of pneumonia and probably a few other things. And I know for a fact you don't want to open that container up in the house because it'll knock you out. I mean I've done it when it's raining outside. I put it on top of the electric stove and turn the fan on high. As long as it exhausts outside, you can do it then. You set this down into the fluid and get it closed right away. And usually I like to leave these 24 hours, but oh, an hour to two would be fine too. I'll let you know how long I left this. And what I'll do every once in a while, or at the end, I'll pick this up and I'll take a toothbrush and I'll brush all of this with that pneumonia solution ammonia this here feels like it's kind of greasy so it might have been closer to the kitchen or might have even been in the kitchen I don't think this thing's ever been cleaned from day after it was bought so here we go here's my cleaning fluid my toothbrush I clean the works with and here are the works. Let's take this and throw it down in there. Oh gosh. I accidentally breathed. <laughs> so there it is. Now we'll leave it in there for a little while. And just to show you, they do have different size bellows. They just keep ranging smaller and smaller. 
So you, if you had to order new ones, you need to know the size of it this way. And there's where the air blows through into the cuckoo box. And if there's missing the door, they do sell the doors for it. Different size doors too, so you gotta measure them. They do sell the chains. This is a bunch of old chains I have, depending whether it's a eight day clock or a one day clock. The chains, they all come nice and shiny and everything. Some people don't want to be shiny, they want to look old along with the clock and I do have different hooks depending what clock it is this here is a definitely a vintage weight because it has the wire when they poured the lead the wire was already in there and that's good for a hook like this because it's small enough and go in there and hook they do have the newer ones which I can't tell you right off where the I don't have a weight with me with the newer ones they'll take a fatter hook here let's see I got a fatter hook in here somewhere they sell fatter hooks and that's because this part where the wire is they don't have the wire it's all one poured piece and this can get around and hook into it and still hold on where that other hook will not hook into it so anyway I plan on doing I got my tools and what I do normally is I'll, I'll brush all this up just to see what I have and then usually I have a cleaning fluid that I uh, rub onto a rag first and I wipe it on here. Now some cleaning fluids will uh, take away this coloring. I don't know what they used back then but sometimes that comes off so you got to be careful. I do have numbers to set on here which if I had the right ones, I, I might go ahead and just put them on. Otherwise, I do sell dials that you, excuse me, that you can stick on, uh, replace the old wooden one. Is that there more than likely is wood painted black, and then each one of these numbers were glued on. That's why some of them have come off. Okay, I took this outside and I gave it a quick wipe down and forgot to show you. Look at that bird's eye. These older ones, I don't know if that's a glass or a resin or what, but it's a orange colored eye and they have a black dot in it. That's what makes these kind of unique. This that one's real filthy. Just rubbing it that eye to show back up when you if you had to restain these don't even worry about just cover the eye that is glass so you can rub that back off as needed so anyway I think I'm gonna go get something uh, to wipe this thing down with say it's been I'm gonna give a wild guess they had it stored out in their garage or up in the attic or something because it's uh, showing, like right there, that dirt, cracking stain. There's a chance I might just take some stain and restain this thing. In fact, I think I will because as you can see, this here, all this stain, I, I don't know what they use. It must be some kind of a water-based stain. It uh, is all lifting on here. And I'm not planning on stripping this clock. I'm just going to possibly coat the stain on here to kind of give it, this old stuff might give it a highlight look. I don't know. So I'm going to clean this up a little bit. And if I stain it, you'll be along with me.
Getting ready for the stain.
Okay, it's been a few hours. Let's see what we have in here. Here, you can see, it's getting cleaner. Here's a little bit of scrub. We have these little holes here. That's where all the gears turn in, turn on, whatever. That's what you want to get cleaned up too because that's what we have to re-oil. So you can see it's shinier, not prettiest, they don't have a vibrating or sonic uh, cleaner. And now what we'll do is we'll take it in the house and wash it with hot soapy water and take a hair dryer to it because we want it to dry as soon as possible. We don't want things building up in there.
okay. See, so you get nice shine now. A lot of the dirt's out of it. Hopefully, all the oil, old oil, and the warness inside these, uh, where the, each one of these gears go on is washed out. Now, we'll dry this up with a hair dryer and get ready to oil it. Okay, that got good and hot. So now, still hot. Anyway, I think now I'm going to go ahead and take these uh, bellow arms off. Reason why is I like to clean them up a little bit. They have rust on them. I don't know if you can see that or not. Might not be focusing on it. There. So we're going to try to clean them up a little bit. This little bugger didn't want to come off. There we go. So it's not bad. But I like to clean up a little bit. <clears throat> you take these rods off. They're normally two different sizes. These here are both the same size, so I don't have to worry about which one goes where. Only time you have to worry about which one goes where is when uh, it cuckoos. You have to get the right one on the right bellows. Otherwise, it'll, it'll be a sick sounding bird. It'll be cooking, cuckooing backwards. Okay, so that's pretty close to being touchable. I have oil here. This here has a needle, it's a tube that lets oil through. And it's kind of like a plunger. I can squish this down inside here and pop it back up. And that kind of primes it and pushes oil out. Or you can just wait for it to drip like some of the cheaper ones. I think I, I might have a cheaper one here, but I'm not too worried about that right now. So let me zoom this in a little bit for you. Get the right way. Well, like I say, wherever one of these things moves, which you can pretty much see, you want to put a dab of oil on it. I'm not even sure if you can see this. And this sucks it back up too. Cuts it out, sucks it back up. And you don't want to leave oil just drained on there. It don't take much oil. To, you're not oiling a car, you're oiling a clockworks. It just needs a light breath of oil. Oops. Any part that moves on this thing, it goes through this uh, brass piece here, you want to get lubed up so your clock will run right. And not want to stop because it's dragging too much. Mm. 
you have to do both sides this side's a little trickier because you have to get up underneath let me push this back again because I don't know how much you're getting to see and like I said I have all these little things here that move around not counting the gears and whatnot Okay, I wanted to show you this here is the counting. I don't know what they call it, but this here counts the hour. And I have it set now to go off, so you'll see how it slowly goes up, and then we'll stop it from there, it stops it from cuckooing. This arm comes back in, and that's where the bird sits. And I magically put these chains in. Take, I'll be taking the round ends off. When you put the chains in, you got to be careful. They'll fall back off again. And you can get them back on. It's just that they're kind of a pain sometimes. So I put them in. I'll just be careful. Just wash the bird. I don't like putting any oil anywhere around on the outside of a clock usually because what that causes is uh, dust to work cling on it. So I do want this to work good. You didn't want to drop. This rod hits here. And he's supposed to go all the way down. Does have a little rust in there which I can't get to. Maybe I'll try a little screwdriver magic carefully. So these things don't do well out in your garage. If it's running all the time it's a uh, not that hard on the works but if you leave it hanging on your wall also it's and then you're in a humid place it's just as bad as leaving it out in your garage you see that doesn't drop down like it should Now let me work on it a little bit, a little bit better. So let's stick it on here and we don't know exactly where it's supposed to go. We don't care at the moment. We wanted to get a ballpark. So when we line it up in there, we're not even putting this on tight. We want to be able to get it in and through the door. So my next step here is to take this, I'm not going to do that, what I need to do is get all these chains into their hole, proper hole. There's one. Two, almost. See, one pair is for winding the clock, and the other pair is to make the cuckoo. And 
the clock that cuckoos and has the musical. If you're worried about value, those are the ones that are have the value is the ones with the musical. But on these uh, cuckoo clocks, if you want to run and you don't like to listen to the cuckoo, there's a little wire up just above the door. Okay, I got the works in, I got the cuckoo bird in. Right here is a little, we'll say a latch, that's meant to close the door if you don't like to listen to him coming out. It'll still keep time, but he won't keep coming out. But why would you have a cuckoo clock if you won't let him out? Oh dear. So now, let's, let's put him away. And I'm going to install the bellows now. And I can tell which one on this one. This one's high, but it doesn't matter because one of the bellows has a wire on it. And what that's for is when this is triggered to come up and cuckoo, that there triggers a bird to bend down with his mouth open and then close his mouth as this drops. So I know where this goes, right on this side. So we'll get back to you in a minute. Need to oil the spring that's in there. Not bad though. Not bad. So I have brand new hands on here. I had to go ahead and use that new face because the, all the numbers I have are just a little bit bigger than these numbers. So I can't use the original one. Other than that, I need to glue the bird on. I have the chains on here, but I don't have the ends on yet. So I put the ends on, find my glue, glue that bird on. And the next thing would be possibly either find or carve out the headdress to this clock in which normally are these leaves here. I'll call them maple leaves. They're fancier than that, but you carve those on here and you get yourself a working clock. So there she is. Put a pendulum that don't belong on it, but it, it works right now. Looking good.